Um, I'm going to move now to our discussant, um, who will, I'm sure, be familiar to the Minister, um, Alistair McKechnie, who is the s a Senior Research Associate in ODI, um, and the former Director of the Fragile States Group in the World Bank, and also, I believe, a former Country Director for Afghanistan. Alistair. Thank, thank you very much, um, Andy, um, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's very um, pleasant for me to look to Kabul and see um, His Excellency the Minister and many old friends and, and, and colleagues. I, I would also like to c congratul congratulate the authors of, the, of, of this report, which I think will provide very useful guidance for countries in similar situation and their partners. And I would like to highlight some key findings of the report, which certainly reinforce my experience in Afghanistan and Palestine and other countries. I think the first point is an important one, and that is it is indeed possible to establish adequate PFM systems in even the most unpromising environments. And second, uh, these systems can be sufficiently adequate to allow partners, particularly the multilateral development banks and the multi-donor trust funds, to channel their funds through government systems. Third, temporary fiduciary arrangements can provide sufficient confidence to allow donor funds to flow through government systems from the very early days after a country comes out of conflict and re-engages with the international community. And I'd add as a footnote that the New Deal on Effective Engagement in Fragile States signed in Busan last, uh, last year specifically uh, allows <coughs> for these temporary arrangements. My fourth point is, is that such temporary arrangements need to be accompanied by parallel technical assistance to build permanent capacity, a point made very forcibly by um, His Excellency the Minister from Somaliland, and that this technical assistance needs to be demand-driven and report to the Minister of Finance and not to the donor who financed it. Also, partial civil service reforms were necessary to attract and retain a qualified staff. Fifth, uh, advanced public financial management systems were difficult to implement in these countries. And we need to think more clearly about what problems these were trying to solve and, and what are the most appropriate instruments for resolving them. Sixth point is, despite the considerable progress in strengthening public financial management in Afghanistan, and, and, and um, Minister Zakiwal made this point very, very clearly, bilateral partners are still reluctant to put their assistance on budget and multilateral partners remain insistent on their using their own procurement rules, special reporting arrangements, and putting their funds through special accounts. In, in addition to what the, the Minister from Afghanistan said, I think it's worth looking at what were the initial conditions in, in Afghanistan in early 2002, because it does serve as a benchmark to see how far the country um, has come. And I remember going there, I think it was in February 2002, and, 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 and some of the points we noticed was there were few qualified staff in the finance ministry. It had no funds and no resources such as desks and, and uh, heated buildings. Government salaries were around $50 per month compared to nearly $200 a month for a UN driver. Second, there were no, uh, no electricity, no computers. Third, the central bank was equally weak. Um, inter international electronic funds transfer was non-existent, apart from the informal money transfer system, which some of the international partners wanted to close as an anti-terrorism measure. The central bank staff had to bring dollar bills and suitcases from Dubai in order to enable the economy to function. And there were no um, functioning banks or formal payment systems outside of Kabul in a country as large as France. But despite all this, capacity did exist, including at the district level, something that we were pleasantly surprised to find. And as the UN um, Special Representative Lakta Brahimi, who is now the Syrian envoy, 
observed later, in a post-conflict situation, the international community usually ex assumes that no capacity exists without trying very hard to find any. And a key early decision, as the minister, I think, alluded to, was to build on and computerize the system that existed with which officials were familiar rather than in, in, in introduce a completely new um, off-the-shelf system. From a World Bank perspective, we were required at that time to put our money through the government budget, and the government certainly strongly demanded this. The challenge was how to do this quickly, achieve early results while laying solid foundations for the future, while also managing the fiduciary and security risks and the risk of failing to facilitate any results. How, how did we go about doing this? Well, firstly, we used the World Bank's emergency procedures, which were designed for natural disasters such as earthquakes, which, which cut through a lot of the internal processing, and this enabled the first $100 million to be approved four months after our first visit to the country. Second, um, we quickly provided the government with firms to act as their agent for procurement, accounting, and audit, and strengthened the advisory capacity of our new office, and I still see uh, much of it is, is, is in place. Third, um, we allowed funds to be dispersed by from Washington until the local banking system became operational. Fourth, we had ex post verification of recurrent budget expenditure, which was financed by the trust fund, and, and those expenditures that failed to pass, um, pass the, the, the tests had to be financed by the government from its very own scarce, scarce funds, and a monitoring agent reporting to the bank was part of this, um, this verification. And the design of this trust fund, which has now, I think, mobilized more than $5 billion, um, was actually based on an early 1990s host fund for, for, for Palestine. Um, Fifth, the um, technical assistance to train the Ministry of, uh, of, of Staff was eventually separated from the technical advice which was providing help in transaction processing. And I think this is one clear lesson. Trying to combine the two um, doesn't work. But then there were also additional programs to finance the return of the Afghan diaspora to attract staff working from the UN and NGOs. And, and also the restructuring of key government departments that rehired staff, uh, rehired current staff and new staff into them at competitive salaries. So there are a number of these parallel things going on, which I think the report um, refers to as one of the as one of the lessons. And the sixth uh, point is the World Bank took much higher risks than it normally did, and this was made easier by Afghanistan's geostrategic importance to its partners. <coughs> and the full support of the senior management of the World Bank. Nevertheless, we had lots of internal uh, battles to fight with our various accountability departments. Let, let me conclude by saying, despite all these reforms, bilateral donors have remained reluctant to put their funds on budget. And we need to think at, a, at meeting li meetings like this why these donors are increasingly reluctant to use national PFM systems, and, and we should strategize on how to address this problem. Let me conclude with two questions. How can we better communicate the success of PFM reforms in fragile states to the international community? And how can we strengthen those areas which are inhibiting more aid flowing through government budgets? Let me stop there, and um, I hope we have productive discussions today. Thank you very much.